So I feel like today is time well spent. <clears throat> I think I'm going to take the day off the gym. I went a little heavy yesterday on shoulders, and I missed my first set in nine weeks. Just about ten weeks. I've been on this training program, yeah, for almost ten weeks. And uh, uh, the previous delts B week where you do seated easy bar overhead press, you know, with back support and everything, no equipment, um, like no, no wrist wraps, no elbow sleeves, nothing like that, no belt. Um, I hit, and this was a tough set too. It was like 152.5. The easy bar is about 12.5. And then I just calculated all the plates, uh, for a set of 10, nice and slow and controlled, like from the clavicle, hardest part is right when the humerus becomes horizontal because that's when you have the greatest moment arm on the glenohumeral joint to basically force pushing against where you try to get the bar so basically right there so anyway uh i tried to bump it up like 40 pounds which is like a little crazy so i went 192.5 i got two nice slow and controlled but the third rep was a failure basically i failed right at humerus horizontal Greatest moment arm of force on the glenohumeral joint, right? The most difficult part of the of the movement is where you have the basically the least advantage in your leverages. And just like a quick note about that too. One of the reasons why, as a power lifter or a strong man, you want to use the leg drive, you want to get you know some equipment on, you want some tension. Just like I was describing in that uh, video about why, uh, what are the basic development, um, what are the ways we develop strength. Um, the reason that this is going to be an, an advantageous exercise for me is that I have to control my speed, not use momentum. And what does that do? It makes the sticking point much more accentuated because you're not using any momentum. The, the idea too in powerlifting and strongman and all these strength sports is to complete the lift. You want to develop the most power out of your position where you have the best leverages. So for a squat, uh, you know, in the hole, in the hole. Um, what you're trying to look for there is a good position to reverse from. Also something that is competition depth. So for overhead too, I mean, this, this depends on guy to guy, but like if you're, if you're a strong man and you're doing axle clean and press, it doesn't really matter where you start. Like if you're too big, like your body is too big to even get the bar to touch your chest, like say a, a Brad Shepard is too big. He has too much tension to even have the axle touch his chest so he can press, but He'll, he'll do a bit of like a leg drive and then plow through the, the sticking point, right? Because otherwise you would never hit 300 overhead. Well, not, not, this doesn't apply to everybody, but most people wouldn't hit 300 pounds overhead if they didn't use that momentum, right? So anyways, it's a useful exercise because we are accentuating the hardest part of the lift for an extended period of time. And then when you go back to this momentum driven leg drive thing, it should make the lift a lot more, a lot more easy, like a lot more easy. So that was one thing I just wanted to mention. And then I just went for labs. So I got my blood taken. That was cool. Stupidly. I mean, I, and I also, I took a bunch of, we'll just call them supplements. So I took a bunch of supplements and put small amounts in clearly labeled bags. And uh, we'll call these other things uh, cylinders. <laughs> tiny cylinders, uh, put them clearly labeled and, um, put them in a box with a contact, some contact, some, some way that isn't my usual contact and, um, left them at home. It's like a 25 minute drive to get over here. I really feel like I should have brought it but anyway. So immediately after labs, I have my chicken and potatoes, right? Cause I've had to fast for about 11 hours. I didn't have to fast. I checked online. I guess you only have to fast for about eight hours. But anyway, just got here, had to fast for the fasted glucose test. And then, um, basically, you know, to plan ahead, I brought some food so that I could get something in me ASAP because the longer you are without food, the more catabolic you'll become. And that's kind of going against everything I'm trying to do right now, which is put on weight, put on muscle. But anyway, time well spent. I don't really know what my point here is. I just kind of wanted to share what I've been up to for no real good reason. Because I think it's nice to know. But I'm a big advocate of getting your labs done 
big advocate of getting your labs done. Get your labs done. Because if you don't know what's going on under the hood, you know, that can be really dangerous. If you just let that go for years and years. So check your blood pressure, get your labs done regularly. I mean, I don't check my blood pressure every day anymore. I used to check it twice a day, every day when it wasn't good. Once it came down to like textbook, I stopped checking it every day and then I'll just check it like every week or if I feel a little bit off. It's, it's been pretty good, but if you start to change things too, check your blood pressure regularly. And also if you change some things, check your labs, get a doctor, get the doctor on board. You don't have to tell the doctor everything. It would be better if you did, but understand that once you tell the doctor some shit, it's on your file for life. But as long as you know what you've changed and you change like incrementally, like one thing at a time and then get labs. So, you know, don't do any massive changes in diet or massive changes. And again, we'll call it supplementation and then go get your labs done. You know, if you say, if you get your labs done and it's like baseline and everything's good and you change one thing, say a little bit of diet, maybe you change a little bit of supplementation, get your labs done again. See, are you still good? Check them in three months too, because sometimes it takes a long time for, um, for lipids and stuff to start to deviate pretty, pretty bad to the, we'll call it to the downside, like to the deleterious realm of like where you're going to end up getting negative health effects over time. And I would say that do that like every three months because you know, if you're willing, I, like, I want to do this for at least another five years and I'm just getting back into the game. I need to make sure that everything is okay. Right. Because if things start getting out of control here now, I'm nine weeks in, that's unacceptable. Right. So, um, get a doctor who will at least check your labs. Again, you don't have to tell the doctor everything. I mean, I recommend you do tell the doctor everything so the doctor can help you, especially if you don't know your physiology very well. You don't know your I was going to say pharmacology, but uh, we'll say <laughs> nutrition very well. If you don't know any of that stuff, get some help from a professional too. If there's reasons that you don't want to tell the doctor to, just get somebody else to look over your labs and tell them what's going on because it can be life-saving for real. And it also preserves you for your, your, your strength career in the, in the, in the longer run. Um, and, uh, you know, plan your day. Plan your day. Man, I tried an air fryer yesterday. I think the air fryer is going to change my life. So much easier. I made homemade breaded. Well, the chicken wasn't homemade, but breaded chicken fingers. Amazing. Like it's homemade with some sesame seed oil, a whole egg, salt, pepper, paprika. What else? There's something else in there. It was Oh, pepper. Pepper? No, I already said pepper. Can't remember what else, but it was really good. And then, uh, so that was like the dredge. Cut up your chicken in little strips, dredge it. And then I had another thing, I blend up uh, three pieces of bread. I should have put like six, but three pieces of bread. Again, with a little bit of seasoning in the bread stuff, the bread crumbs, like a little bit of salt. Um, I've seen online like a bunch of cheese, but I didn't want the fat in there. I didn't want any more fat. A little bit of a little bit of that oil and the dredge. It's perfect. You you hardly get like a you hardly get like a tablespoon in the whole mix. And the dredge, not not all of the dredge sticks to the chicken either. So very minimal fat. So juicy. The chicken is amazing. With a little bit of sriracha and some... Oh fuck, what is this stuff called? Man, it's this barbecue sauce. It's, I forget what it's called, but it says on the front, the sauce is the boss. Man, the sauce is good. Ronnie Coleman, chicken potatoes. Fuck, man, this guy knew what was up. If he had an air fryer back in the day, man would have changed his life air fryer so good so get your labs done get an air fryer train hard but not too hard don't leave the house without your food train hard guys